Hi, welcome to Real Talk with Rabbit and Rudder. I'm Billy Rabbit of Hometown Real Estate. And I'm Ron Rudder. And this is where we educate you on the world of real estate. And today, we've welcomed back Dave Stom with Lighthouse Title. And Dave, we wanted to invite you today because, um, you know, with this hot real estate market, we're seeing a lot of action in the marketplace. Right. And one of the questions that we get all the time and a lot of the things that we're seeing kind of pop up everywhere is for sale by owners, you mm -hmm. know, where people were actually trying to sell the house on their own without a real estate agent, mm -hmm. without being represented. Sure. So we wanted to ask you, you know, in your professional, you know, you know, career here, what are some things that you see or maybe some pitfalls that for sale by owners somehow, you know, maybe they run into or maybe things that they should be considering? Sure, sure. It's a million dollar question. Right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, well, good, good to be back, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, absolutely. Great, great to have you. So, I think for me, so my, so my background, I'm a real estate lawyer. Uh, Lighthouse Title is my title company, and you know, we handle the exchange of funds in a deal. We create documents that make a transaction official. Uh, we issue title insurance, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm approached regularly as a real estate lawyer who's been in this, this business for a while. Uh, by folks who, who want to sell their house themselves and they want me to draft a contract and would like me to handle the exchange of funds, would like me to do a title search, would like me to make the deal official. I think the biggest issue with trying to go for sale by owner is that what I just what I just talked about my role is, that's only one piece of the puzzle. And, 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 and frankly, an important piece, but a small piece. Sure. sure. I think a real estate agent is your quarterback in linking you up with all of the vendors that you need to work with mm -hmm. in a transaction. Real estate agents also your trusted advisor in making sure that you can, in a market like this, get multiple offers, meaning price the property the right way so you, you make the property attractive for people to come to you and, 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 and frankly make an offer to, to purchase your property. Um, market the property the right way. Hire the right, the right folks to take the pictures, and the, the, the photography, the, the, the videographer, the, you know, I'm sitting here looking at this camera right now, high quality video, important, important. <laughs> 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 and, and, and so, so, so to be more succinct, I, I think the pitfall of a for sale by owner transaction is that you're, you're, you're in a position where I hope that you know how to price the property and I hope that you know how to get to buyers. Mm -hmm. Sure. Right. And, and, and I hope you also understand how home inspection works, how negotiation as a result of home inspection works, and um, anyway, not lecturing you. <laughs> <laughs> sure. No, I mean, you know, Dave, you, you bring up a lot of really great points. And, yeah, you know, one of the sure. things that we see, even when, when a, a property or a home is exchanged from, maybe it's even exchanged from family member to family member, mm -hmm. one of the most overlooked things is, is home inspections, right? So, oh, yeah. you know, and it's not necessarily that the seller you know, is, is, is trying to hide something or not disclosing something about the property, but simply that maybe they're not aware. Maybe they're not aware that the roof is leaking or that there's mold in the crawl space or whatever it may be. Right. And then we see the exchange, you know, maybe they hire a lawyer and the property is exchanged and it's pretty flawless through that end, but then all of a sudden the buyer now is, is absorbing, you know, the amount of money to fix some of these repairs that they, they simply just didn't know were there. So, right. so that's one of the things that we see. So, Ron, I mean, what are some, some of the pitfalls that you're seeing for, for, for sale by owner? Um, the marketing is a big piece of that. Um, so for us, uh, what we do is we, we send out postcards. We have, you know, the Internet. Um, we have multiple, multiple uh, connections through the Internet. We have connections with other realtors. We can say, hey, this is coming soon. Uh, those are things that the fit for sale by owner um, doesn't really have uh, for working for them. Sure. sure. So uh, that's a very important piece. Um, we, we normally can get houses sold within the first week easily uh, but that's because uh, the other realtors and other uh, buyers know that the house is going to be there sure so you're kind of talking about the exposure that they're getting by right. having a real estate professional market the property mm -hmm. absolutely so Dave I mean can you Dave can you elaborate a little bit more on you know some of the expenses so so maybe they're not necessarily you know quote unquote hiring a real estate agent but what are some of the expenses that they should still see? Maybe a seller is still going to be absorbing even through that transaction. Sure, sure. So I think that so 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 if we if we try to isolate why a lot of folks try to to sell their houses on their own, it really has to do with with cutting out the expense of, of a real estate commission, right? And and it's looking at things in a vacuum and saying, okay, 
if the price is constant and the house sells itself, and this is the price point, all of these items go into the category of this is what will make me net less money. Sure. There are lots of things that will make you net less money. If you don't price your house the right way, it makes you right, net, right. net less money. I, I think that if you don't negotiate properly for certain things like allocation of who pays for transfer and recreation taxes, uh, allocations for whether or not there's going to be a seller credit towards buyer closing costs, because so many mortgage loan programs uh, end up having, you end up in situations where you work with a purchaser who has a lot less money to put down on the property, and it follows that they may not be able to incorporate all their closing costs into the uh, bottom line of their of their loan and what they borrow. Yeah. Right. Um, so, you know, it, the list goes on. Sure. Yes. No, absolutely. So, and Dave, you you touched on something that I think is important that a lot of the for sale by owner sellers they don't really understand or they don't really you know get mm -hmm. is that you know. Unfortunately, you know, if they're working with buyers, you know, and hopefully they are trying to, you know, get out and, and try to touch as many buyers as possible, most of those are going to be represented by a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. And so the thought sometimes is, especially initially, you know, we'll see a listing hit Zillow or, or hit a website. Maybe they're, you know, putting it in the classifieds. Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a whole other segment, right? So I'll have to invite you back for that. So. So, but, but they go out and then, you know, they're starting to get all these showings, all these showings, all these showings. And one of the questions that's always asked from a buyer's agent is, you know, what type of co-op or what type of commission are you willing to pay? Right. And so initially, and it, it almost works like clockwork where they're saying, you know, hey, I'm not paying a commission at all. I'm not, not working with a real estate, I'm not paying a commission at all. Right. But then one of the big misconceptions is, is that that real estate agent is going to have to be paid commission by somebody. And if the buyer is now having to pay for the commission versus the seller, is that that's all now wrapped up into closing cost. Mm -hmm. yes. And so now you're, you're, you're forcing that buyer, like, and like you hit it perfectly about you know, needing you know, X amount of money to close that deal. Now they're having to wrap up even more added expense into it. So now mm -hmm. you're either raising the price of the house to cover it, which you know, then you might run into appraisal issues. So like you said, the list goes on and on and on about all the, all the you know, issues or all the opportunities that you have and, and really all the things that you should be considering. And I think I think to piggyback off that, Billy, I mean, I, I think the most obvious issue that comes to mind when we think about this exact equation that you're talking about in terms of basically got to price the house the right way, you get into a scenario where we talk about an appraisal. What does that even mean, right? Sure. So the vast majority of people today do not put 20% down when they purchase a home. Absolutely. Right. And so you end up in a scenario where you really dig into the salary and say, ah, oh, man, I, I'm not paying that cooperative commission, meaning I'm not paying the buyer's agent. The vast majority of buyers that, are, are, that, that you're going to entertain offers from that are working with real estate agents have contracts where they owe a buyer broker a commission. Mm -hmm. And so what's going to happen is that you find yourself in a scenario where you have a buyer that maybe can't put 20% down, maybe they're putting 5% down, and now they've got hanging over their head the obligation to pay three or $4,000 to a buyer broker. Yep. Your appraisal becomes even more important. Your appraisal matters because it also links to the purchase price and the purchase price that you're willing to take for the property. But then you run the risk of losing your buyer because the appraisal issues completely torpedo your deal. Sure. I mean, you see how all, all, it's interconnected. Oh, uh, absolutely. So, you know, I mean, and Ron, how many times are you actually providing comps to an appraiser, especially in this market with, with everything that's going on and you know drive-by appraisals and things like that? Right, I mean, right. I mean, I mean, I know we've talked about a lot of the listings that you've had trying to find you know yes. certain appraisals to hit that mark. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, one of the one of the um, the things that I'm I'm particularly good with is uh, finding out the comps in that area and the pricing the house just right. You know, I'm a price strategy guy. So um, as a owner selling your own house you might not have the knowledge of how to comp your house or how to um, you know price it right at the I call it the uh, sweet spot you know sure. where, where you're going to get enough people in the door but also get the highest price you know absolutely and and that's one of the other misconceptions is all of the cost associated that the real estate agent is you know is absorbing to right. to really market the property to have you know to spend all the money on all the tools and resources that mm -hmm. you need to make sure you can find all the comps you know pulling right. off the database so yep. there's really a lot that goes into it so okay thanks dave for joining us today that was very informative i, I really appreciate you stopping by and thanks for having me you're, you're yeah. too kind man. all right thanks <laughs> everybody 
Visit www.exploremdhomes.com to find out more about title, about how much your house is worth, and if you're a FISBO, how we can help you out. All right, and we will see you next time.